All right, just a quick little video show how the uh, titanium ceramic uh, Cerakote job turned out. The first time I've ever ceramic coated a piston uh, and the first time I've used Cerakote, but I have to say, aside from, you know, a few little minor defects, it turned out pretty darn, pretty darn nice, uh, if I do say so myself here. Um, should certainly do the job. I, I kind of rushed spraying these because I was chasing daylight and uh, I just did them in a cardboard box, you know, n not a spray booth or anything like that. And I just used a kind of a cheapy little uh, Nico one millimeter spray gun. I've got it disassembled for cleaning right now, but um, you can see uh, I'm in various stages of getting this little uh, silic uh, silicone tape off. It's a high heat tape, stood up real well in the oven at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. But getting it off is no joke. Uh, I've been, I've tried a few different things, spraying some uh, gasoline on it. What what really works, kind of uh, the best, is these little um, these little plastic razor blades. You just kind of got to get in there and chip it off like like you would with your fingernails or something. Uh, when it when the tape goes on it's no problem but when it cures in the oven it kind of almost turns to glass and cracking it off you can see it doesn't it doesn't want to really let go of the piston too too much uh, and on the areas where the anti uh, scuff coating is it really hangs on for dear life and so you just got to take your fingernail or one of those razor blades and, and chip away but you can kind of see the results, like I say, pretty nice. Uh, the way I did these, I, I didn't videotape the whole process, uh, but I'll maybe I'll edit the video and kind of show some slides of what I was working on. So what I basically did was I used some uh, 100, I believe it was 100 grit aluminum oxide and a little uh, sandblasting gun, and I, I did the surface with the aluminum oxide to get it prepared for the Cerakote according to the, the application guide on the Cerakote website. And I ended up buying two products for this job. One of them, the one I use for the, the pistons here is this particular product, uh, the V-Series uh, 139 Titanium Red Piston Coat. Uh, it's pretty pretty easy to spray down. Uh, this is one of these high volume, low pressure guns. Uh, like I say, I I think I got this only for I think it was like twenty five bucks or less on uh, Amazon. Uh, it did a nice job spraying uh, one millimeter size. Uh, I think Sarah Cook uh, calls for a point eight millimeter size, but this this worked fine. Uh, just shook it up, dump you know, dump it in the hopper through a filter. Uh, I think it was a 100 micron filter or a 100 mesh filter, something like that. And you you basically aluminum oxide blast the, the surfaces that you're gonna coat um, at about 80 psi, and then you spray at 30 psi with the the Cerakote. And then uh, I just let it air dry for 15 minutes. And then I tossed it into the oven for an hour and a half at, a, at 500 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And like I said, pretty, pretty pleased with the results. Um, when I first sprayed it, I did three coats. So the way that I ended up achieving this finish here was not strictly just laying down paint from the gun. Uh, since I'd never done this, I was kind of out of my comfort zone. What I did was I masked off the the pistons with uh, blue painters tape first just a uh, you know 3m type of stuff and then I I shot the uh, aluminum oxide to roughen up, up the, the the surface of the piston and I will say uh, on the Keith black pistons out of the box they had the uh, milling machine uh, tool marks uh, on the surface so what I did with that was I used some I think it was 400 and then 600 grit sandpaper and kind of polished the tool marks away 
Um, then I masked them with the blue painter's tape. And then I shocked them with the aluminum oxide until they had a dull kind of finish. And I, like I said, I took some pictures along the way. So I'll, I'll put those in the video so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, I also use a, a map gas torch to kind of burn out, you know, just very lightly burn, heat these up and burn out the, uh, any residual fumes or liquids that's in the, in the aluminum itself. Uh, Cerakote recommends that you gas these out for, I think, 30 minutes at 500 degrees. Uh, I didn't particularly want to go through that step, so I just cleaned them with some uh, acetone and then uh, used the, the, the little map gas torch to kind of uh, gas them out a little bit on the top. Now, uh, after spraying them with the aluminum oxide to roughen up the surface, I then masked them with the silicon tape, and it's it's just the green tape that you see everybody use that comes from Amazon. Uh, it went on real nice, uh, no problems there. Uh, like I say, when it cures in the oven, it, it, it hardens up and it's a little bit difficult to get off. I, I'm soaking it in some gasoline to see if that might help, but basically you just gotta sit there and chip it off and then use a little uh, plastic bristle brush in the sink and, and get things cleaned up. I've, obviously already done this one uh so then what i did was i after it was masked off with the high temperature tape i sprayed it with the gun uh the the first i i did two two coats kind of back and forth with the gun and that left uh, i had too much material on there so after doing all four pistons and i looked at them oh my gosh you know i had like a run on one of the pistons and the material was way too thick so what I did was I came back with a blue paint, uh, you know, a blue shop towel, and I, and I was going to just start all over. So I wiped off the ceramic, and interestingly enough, not very much came off on the paper towel, and it actually left a real nice kind of amount of material soaked into the, into the aluminum where I had uh, uh, aluminum oxide uh, blast media blasted. I was like, oh wow, that that actually kind of I could practically just go with that. So that's what I was originally going to do. So I took all the pistons and I kind of uh, wadded up one of those blue paper towels and and then I wiped the surfaces and I thought, oh yeah, that, that looks pretty darn good. Maybe I'll just toss these in the oven, you know. And then I thought, eh, I don't know, that seemed like maybe it's not going to have quite the right amount of, you know, I'm shooting for, for one to two mils, uh, which is two thousandths of an inch on the top of these. And so what I did was I backed the gun out a little bit so it sprayed just an, a little bit lighter coat. You can kind of adjust it with, with this knob here and, and this one this one here. And I'm still not fully sure how this gun works, so I was kind of winging it a little bit. But I still had material left in, in the little hopper. So I was like, yeah, let's just fool around, you know, worst case. And just start, you know, sand them down or something, blast them again. So I wiped them off with that little blue paper towel and it left kind of a pretty nice you know residue in the aluminum so I thought well what if I just lay down another couple coats so that's what I ended up doing was I took the gun and I laid down a light coat and I just held the pistons in my hand and shot it with my other hand and it laid down a real nice finish there was a little bit of lint but you know I was just working outside and like I said I was racing the sun you know the sun was trying to set on me so and I had kind of already got into this, and I was like, oh man, if, if I don't get this pulled off, this is going to be a big disaster, you know. So I backed the needle out on the gun, and I shot a light coat, and oh man, it just looked beautiful. And maybe it was because of the sun, the golden hour, I don't know, but it just looked beautiful. And I was like, oh, okay, wait, we got something here now. So then I did all four the same routine. I sopped up the, the ceramic uh, Cerakote where it had gotten too thick. It left a real nice kind of base ground coat and then I backed off the the gun a little bit and I sh I kind of floated in a second and third coat real light and then I set them on my desk and I and let them air dry for 15 minutes ran upstairs to the kitchen and heated up my oven to 500 uh, degrees on uh, convection bake and then I kind of uh, carefully made a little seat out of wadded up 
uh, aluminum foil and put each piston very carefully in there, slid them in the oven an hour and a half, and then I used my laser gun to check and they were all right at 500 degrees. Now I had emailed previously with Cerakote and they said, because I said, I kind of wanted to maybe do it at 400 degrees, you know? And I said, would it be okay to cure them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours instead of one hour at 500 degrees Fahrenheit? And they said, yes, that, that should be fine. So, But I ended up doing it for about an hour and a, 15 minutes or an hour and a half at 500 degrees. When I hit an hour and you know 15 minutes or so, I shut the oven off and I let it naturally cool down until the pistons got to 100 degrees. And then I took them out and here, and then I, after chipping off uh, that, that crazy uh, green uh, silicone or silicone, uh, I guess it is, uh, tape or whatever it is, I don't know, I'll put the link in the description. And uh, this is what we have, and I'm very pleased with the results. Now I will say, I'm glad that I went with the green tape because trying to find this, this tape on the piston if it was uh, clear it might have posed a little bit of a problem but you can see I mean you see there's a few little specks of just kind of gunk that got in there but I don't think it's make, gonna make a heck of a lot of difference either way like I say I'm real pleased with it now also at the same time you can kind of see up here what I've done with the cylinder head now what I'm doing here is I masked everything off and I took the valves out and I cleaned them and uh, just on the wire wheel, you know, the grinder, got all the carbon buildup off, stuck some old spark plugs I had in, in the cylinders and wrapped the entire cylinder head in a, in a thick uh, poly bag. And then I went to work here with the, with the glass beater and aluminum oxide, same deal and it, it looks pretty good. Now, I won't, what I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the V-series Cerakote on these valves. So I'm gonna pull the valves out, and you can see here, I've got some uh, silicon uh, kind of insulation with probably, I don't know if, if that's silica or fiberglass or, or what, but maybe some sort of ceramic stuff. So, and then I've got some high temperature little caps. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the valves, mask them off with this green tape on the underside where the seats are, and then shoot the Cerakote on top. And then I'll have the valves in, the valve stems in this heavy duty insulation with the caps on the end, because what I don't wanna do, even though I don't think there's too much risk of it. I want to just be 100% sure. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to um, inadvertently alter the temper or take away the hardness of the of the end of the valves. You know what I mean? So uh, this will allow me to to do the kind of insulate the valves and, and then just uh, bake off the the um, Cerakote on the face of the valves. And like I say, I'm going to use the titanium red uh, Cerakote on the valves, maybe even spray a little on the back side of the valves. And then on the chamber here, and you can see I pulled a little of my mat, I gotta go back and mask that off. On the chambers here, I'm gonna use a similar product, which is floating around the garage somewhere, I don't know where, but it is, I believe it is the, it's the air dry more or less the air dry version of this. So this one has to be cured in the oven. The air dry, I believe, I want to say it's 186. I don't know where it is. Let me see if, see if I can find it over here. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay. And you can see what fun we're having here in the back of the truck. All right. Oh, and then you can see also the spray, to spray the uh, the stuff I just use this little dryer. I have a larger one, but it's kind of a hassle. So I just I rigged this one up just to do it kind of in line, and it worked okay. I also drained my tank on my compressor before I started shooting anything. But this is the product here, uh, the C series, 
186 piston code, which has more or less the same characteristics as the, the titanium one over here, but it's air dry. Now it might take five days to air dry, but that's okay because what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to put my aluminum cylinder head in the oven at 500 degrees. That's where I draw the line. So I said I'm going to spray the chambers with this product here and just let the cylinder head air dry for, for five days or so before I uh, put everything back on. So I'm going to do the cylinder cha or the, the chambers here, uh, combustion chambers. The valves, they will end up the valves, they will end up being the titanium. And then I was thinking I might get really tricky and media blast out the exhaust uh, runners, not the intake runners, but just the exhaust runners, and then use this Cerakote product on the inside of that and that's just to in, encapsulate the heat as it's leaving the motor and the purpose of this whole kind of thing is to prevent the heat from the cylinder uh, and the combustion of the, of the gasoline to prevent it from soaking through the piston and kind of locking it into the cylinder you know, the, the chamber, and converting as much of that chemical uh, gasoline energy into, into power and heat, uh, driving the piston down and keeping the chamber hot, uh, and improve the thermal kind of characteristics of the motor such that more of the heat is going into the efficiency of driving the, uh, the truck down the road, as opposed to, you know, heating the pistons, or overheating the pistons, or heating them up. Now, um, I've read some white papers on doing this process, and you do have to be careful uh, that you don't act inadvertently in introduce uh, detonation in the motor. I don't think that's going to be a problem with, with this. I can, if needed, I can, I can back it off. The temperature a little bit with some spark plugs. I'm going to probably run the 20, uh, which is a cooler plug here. Um, also, I think you know mostly the heat will be heading out of the motor, uh, and as opposed to changing too much of the uh, temperatures in the cylinder. You know, you're probably dealing with 1,500 degrees or 1,200 degrees in the in the chamber. You know, if you add uh, 100 plus or minus degrees there, it, from a percentage standpoint, it's, it's not a huge change. So I think we're in safe, I think we're still in safe territory. Uh, I'm hoping that it just makes the truck run cleaner, uh, gets me maybe a little bit more efficiency, helps the pistons kind of stay a little bit cooler, and, and, uh, and it's just a fun experiment. And this may be kind of the only, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to make any uh, assumptions, but I, I'll say, I'll, I'll say it this way, I, I, I'll bet you there aren't a lot of 22 REs on the road that have ceramic coated pistons, so, but this will be one of them. Uh, I've got to chip off the, the rest of the, the silicon uh, tape here, or silicone or whatever it is, now I'm curious, I, I'm going to have to look it up. I mean, obviously I know the difference between silicone in silicon, but I, because of the nature of this tape, I'm not 100% sure what they've done here. So I'll have to research that a little bit more. In any event, that's kind of where things stand. Uh, I will put some uh, frames in the in the video showing some of the the process with the the pistons there for anyone who's interested in that. And next step will be to ceramic coat the faces of these valves, and then. Uh, lay some some of the air dry so uh, um, uh, Cerakote down on the chamber here and kind of give it a little bit of an extra kind of uh, you know protection against the the, the heat from the combustions uh, when running the motor so it'll be interesting to see how it all goes down um, let me see what else we got I think that's probably it I I 
think I mentioned in the last video that I finished gapping the rings. Those are floating around in, in bags here somewhere, but I, I gapped all the rings for all the cylinders uh, right down to the specs I wanted uh, within, you know, a thousandth of an inch. Running uh, 20, I think it was 28 to 29 thousandths on the top rings and running, I believe it was 34 to 35 thousandths on the second ring. And then I don't remember what it was on the oil control rings, but I think it was 15 or 20 thousandths, whatever it was, it was plenty good. And I had mentioned, I had mentioned in my other video that I might, on cylinder, the cylinder wall number two, where there's a little bit of a scar here, uh, I, I mentioned that I might try to float in some, and I don't know if you can see, oh yeah, you can kind of see it now. So you can see there's a little scar there, and very mild right there, and I think there's one down at the, uh, at the base there. Kind of hard to see, but this is the one that was keeping me up at night, but I, I think I'm just going to not do anything with it. It's, it really represents not, not much of a threat, I don't think, to the overall operation of the motor, and it's, it, it doesn't even represent as much volume as the piston uh, gap, ring gap. And what I did to try to combat a little bit of it was I ran a slightly smaller gap on those rings. So I think I'm just going to call that good and not monkey around with putting any of the Cerakote product in there. So that's kind of where things stand. Um, Oh, uh, one more thing. Here, let me let me run over here. Sure, glad this video has turned out to be short, huh? Uh, I was in the previous video. Uh, grab this stuff on my desk here, or so. In my previous video, I was. Let me just grab some paperwork off my desk here. And then we'll get back over on the light. In, in my previous video, I had been talking about this uh, this little guy here, the adjustable cam gear. Now I'm running, on this motor, I'm running the LC Engineering uh, EFI Pro Cam, which is it's just a Cal Cams, I think, or Competition Cam. I can't remember who, or maybe Weber Cams, but, uh, uh, sorry, Comp Cams. Um, so, if you look at the, and, and I had mentioned, yeah, it's the, it's the EFI Street Pro Cam. So you can see the specs that the LC Engineering puts on their website. They have a slight error here. The lobe separation on this, this camshaft is actually uh, 10 point, uh, 110.7. For, for whatever reason, they have it listed as 110, which the math, the mathematics of that does not work out correctly, but uh, at 110.75 it does. So you can see some of my, my notes here. Um, the cam, when, you, when it's dialed in at zero uh, degrees relative to the, the motor there, it's, um, it, the intake opens at six degrees, closes at 30 degrees, after bottom dead center. The exhaust opens at 49. Exhaust closes at 10 degrees before top dead center. And I had mentioned in the previous video that I was going to run the adjustable uh, cam, uh, crank uh, camshaft timing gear at 10 degrees retarded. But when I said that, I hadn't done the mathematics or I hadn't done the, 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 the the math on the whole thing. So this is the math on the camshaft and the opening and closing relative to the crankshaft uh, uh, location for installing the EFI uh, camshaft at you know at zero. And you can kind of see there's no overlap, and out of the box. The intake opens at six degrees before top dead center. Uh, it, it closes at 30 degrees after bottom dead center. 
the exhaust opens, where does it open? The exhaust opens at 10 degrees before top dead center. And I think I got that right. Let me see. Oh, uh, no, sorry. Exhaust closes at 10 degrees before. And then there's a four degree no overlap. And then the, the intake opens at six degrees before. So the exhaust closes, then the intake opens. Uh, the exhaust opens actually 49 degrees here. So at in the last video or one of the videos I had mentioned I was going to do the camshaft uh, 10 degrees retarded. And that would represent, because there's a two to one ratio between the camshaft and the crankshaft, that would represent a, a full 20 degree uh, retarding of the crank position, which not good. I don't think that would be good. Might, might be good if I was turning the motor at 8,500 RPMs, but I don't think it'd be good otherwise. So it creates a situation at that extreme uh, retarding of the camshaft where the exhaust opens 10 degrees after the piston clears top dead center. That in and of itself is not horrible, but what I didn't like was it, it puts the intake opening event at a full 14 degrees, and that's just not, not, not good, I don't think. That's too much. So what I ended up doing was working out the, the numbers with 5 degrees retarding on, on the cam, using the little adjustable gear and what i'm talking about here for people who didn't watch the other video is this this little cam gear here that you can get from lc engineering and it allows you to advance or retard the camshaft relative to the crankshaft so here's a pretty handy little guy like i said i was gonna run it full 10 degrees retarded uh, from stock but now i'm gonna do five degrees retarded and that just gives you more top end power, a little bit less torque, and my hope is to allow the motor to wind out a little bit better. Now, at 5 degrees camshaft retarding, you get 10 degrees crankshaft retarding. And so that puts things in a pretty nice zone, I think. You've got your intake opening 4 degrees after top dead center, and it closes at 40 degrees. Uh, after bottom dead center, that gives the uh, inertia and momentum of the air plenty of time to fill the cylinder before you start to uh, compress the charge. So that's good. Um, you, the piston at four degrees hasn't really started to accelerate downward too much, so that's okay. Um, what I really like is, and because we're dealing with a single overhead cam, I, I, I can't vary the the duration or timing of the you know intake versus exhaust I'm just stuck with whatever's ground into the cam and with the exhaust it puts it so that the exhaust opens uh, just shy of 40 degrees before bottom dead center that's that's fine and then the exhaust takes full advantage of the upstroke of the piston evacuates the cylinder and then closes dead on at top dead center and and you have four degrees of piston travel which is very the piston is basically doing nothing at top dead center and then and then you what you get most of the exhaust out of the chamber and then the intake opens up and, and we start the process over again so that's that feels pretty good to me put in the camshaft a little retarded to get a little bit better top end power but not throwing any of these uh, intake or exhaust events too far out of whack. And you can see here the cam, just verifying my work here, the cam's got 216 degree duration on the intake and 219 degrees on the exhaust. And there's no overlap, so, you know, it's not a crazy not not any kind of radical camshaft it's just a little bit a little bit better than a stock cam there okay so just wanted to touch on that that's all uh and then I'm, i'll be continuing work here on uh coating these chambers and taking the wrapping off the rest of the pistons but like i said in the beginning of the video uh, i'm really pleased with uh, how the my first uh, for foray into uh, ceramic coating 
pistons has turned out. So I'll be looking forward to getting these in the motor soon here. All right, uh, if you made it through to the end of the video, I want to say thank you very much for dealing with my long rambling uh, content on, on YouTube. As I sometimes point out, I'm, I'm not known for my short videos. But uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I do appreciate everybody who's on the channel. And uh, like I always say, if you have any questions about anything I've covered here in the video, please, by all means, feel free to use the comment section below. And I'm uh, more than happy to uh, field those questions. All right. Thank you again for watching.